Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today you get not one, but two videos on basically the same subject. We're looking at particle generators today, and there's two different particle effect systems generator we're going to look at. They both solve the same problem, but both take very different approaches. It's weird, I've gotten a kind of a convergence of events on these. I had a number of people requesting both of these programs, and one of these programs is coming to Steam later on this week, so I figured, eh. Let's cover them both. So today we're going to look in this video at Blast Effects. In the follow-up video, we will look at another system called Particle Effects Designer. Ignore that for now, though. We're coming back to it. First, we're going to focus on Blast Effects. And if you're down with looking for a particle system, stay tuned for the next video because I'm going to publish them both at the same time. Uh, so what exactly is Blast Effects? Well, it is commercial software, but there is a full functioning demo available. It's actually the demo I am using. The only thing limited is the ability to save the rendered sprite sheet. And that is a key term to what we're doing here. Basically, we are creating a sprite sheet animation from particle effects. So let's go to the feature sheet. One thing that's important to understand is you need OpenGL ES 3.3 or 3. Sorry, OpenGL 3.3 or ES 3.0 to run. Download the demo before you purchase it. Uh, basically, every GPU made since the HD Intel HD 3000, I think, should be compatible with that requirement. But better to be safe than sorry. So what we're looking at here is GPU accelerated particles. Uh, change the look of the final output using customizable post-process image effects. Retro 8 and 16-bit style effects. Import JASK or GIMP color palettes. Uh, export the final result to a ping sprite sheet, individual images, or animated GIF ready to be imported into any engine. Uh, customize the amount of frames to render, render the frame size, and undo uh, and the rendering f rendering frame rate. Uh, full undo redo system, seamless looping mode, duplicate em duplicate emitters, choose emitter drawing order, zoom and pan, load and save, customize the background with an image or color, and it's available for Windows, Macs, and Linux. Hey, look at that. I actually got that up front for once. Um, it's also got these special effects of pixelation, pixel map, gradient map, posterize, outline, chromatic aberration, and XY symmetry. And here are some of the results you can come up with, but enough of that. Let's jump right into the demo. So here you can see immediately what you're dealing with, and you're going to find as far as um, ease goes. This is the easier of the two programs. Also the cheaper of the two. It's 15 bucks. It says it's on sale, but ignore that. Itch.io is always on sale. Anything ever on Itch.io is basically constantly forever on sale. But your workflow is pretty simple here. On the left hand side, there is your raw particle system. Here is your processed particle system. Over here is what you use to create your emitter. We can have multiple emitters in the scene and we can play multiple emitters all the time, all at the same time. We can also set them to loop their animation. Uh, and generally, oh, didn't mean to say generally as I click the general tab, but yeah, that's what I did. Uh, so basically you're just coming down here and you're setting up your particle system. So we can just give it a random seed. So we're gonna get just randomly different results. How long it lasts. So we give it an overall lifespan. Uh, let's see, we can change the number of particles. Let's jack those way up by a factor of tenfold, like that. And so on and so forth, we can change the burst amount. So there you can see the, re the results of a whole lot more particles in this particular case. You can change the spread, the angle, so we could have them going off at a five degree angle, or we can have them go off at a 56 degree angle. But let us go back to a zero degree angle, and let's make this go straight up and down like that. You can obviously affect various different other things. You could change their speed. Uh, yeah, so next up we get into the shape. You can change how the emitter is shaped, the raw emitter. I mostly like point, so they all seem to come from the same spot, but you can modify the emitter. You can change the texture of the particle itself, and it ships with a number of different textures. So if you wanted to have a bubble effect, you could go with a bubble effect. You want to have a smoke effect, you can have a smoke effect. Now this being way too high is actually kind of ruining that a little bit. So let's turn the number of particles down. So say you're trying to create smoke. There you go. You just created smoke. Uh, you can change your animation speed out right there. Again, we can change the velocity, so the velocity could be doubled and you're going to see our particles manage to go much higher as an end result. Uh, we're going to randomize the velocity. We can change up the linear acceleration using this nice little graph like so. And orbital velocity, radial velocity, tangential velocity, dampening curve. And we can come down here and get a color going. So this is actually a gradient over the lifetime. So if we wanted to start off, say we were doing some fireish stuff, so we could come down here and start with a red. And then let's bring that here and change that to a, a white, like that. All right, so there we're gonna see, I'm gonna jack my speed down a little bit so that it's actually more on screen. So let's get that down to about say 240. 
there you see. So you're seeing the color of the particles are transitioning over time as it continues on through. Uh, so that is your lifetime color. So you saw I can make multiple uh, points on my gradient to change and have fine control over as the lifestyle goes. So if I wanted to, for some reason, say go here, make it at this point white, and then have them magically turn blue after the fact, hey, I can. So, uh, I don't know why I didn't blue at the end there. Maybe I got too much white going on. There, so you see your blue coming in at the end result. Uh, then we've got control over the angle. Pretty straightforward. Flow mapping, uh, we can change it. I'm not 100% sure what flow mapping is doing, to be honest here. Let's give it a texture, see what it does. Mm. All right, I'll admit to you, I still don't know what it's doing. So that one I'll have to look up to figure out. And you can also change the motion type so you can have it go to sine and cosine or none. And that is essentially it. You're basically going through that combination of parameters over there to create your emitter. Now we could add another emitter if we so wished, but that is kind of the gist of it. So now what you're seeing is over here is your output. Your output is looking a whole lot like your input, but that is where this guy comes in. Here's where you can put your special effects into the stack. Now, if you've worked with any node-based editor, you, you kind of know this output pin to input pin concept. So we can right click, we can do add an effect. So say we wanted to pixelate our results, uh, we could do so, and we'll just drag our source or output out there, our source to the input. Uh, we can change the amount of pixelation we want. So let's do five pixels five pixels and there you see we have a pixelated result coming out of the end result and we could just keep adding effects as we wanted so let's do chromatic aberration and again connect that to the output connect that to the input and let's jack our strength up to 56 percent and there you go so you can create a number of different effects very very simple this is it's kind of a program that really kind of encourages trial and error and then once again up here you can create multiple so i could create another particle system in the scene and then when you are done and ready and happy with what you've got you basically come on in here you say how wide and how high you want each frame of animation to be the number of frames per second uh so if you wanted 60 frames per second by 256 by 256 it's going to create a big image but actually it's going to create a 15 360 by 256 image as a result uh, and then when you want go ahead and click render I can't do that because I am using the demo so there is the end result there is our sprite sheet and our playing and this is what it would look like in your end game and you've got some control over here so we could actually have it spit out to individual images or we could try and create an animated gif here but I can't save so that is what you need to pay the 15 bucks for. So if you like what you saw here, you want to be able to create those animated images or sprite sheets, whatever for your game, that is how you do it. And that is the limitation of your demo. As I mentioned early on, this is going up live on Steam as well in about a day or two. And of course I will toss the link uh, to their itch.io page down below. So that is one of the two particle systems we are going to look at today. That is Blast FX. And stay tuned for the other video, unless of course I published it first, then hey, welcome to the second video. It gets kind of confusing. So hope you found that useful. Uh, let me know which of the two looks more interesting to you. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.